A middle-aged man goes to his room, and says that the world of games are capable of providing experiences that can be enjoyed even by a 38-year-old man, as is his case. In the game he can be a young character, and do things that he currently could no longer do, and well, he starts by creating his avatar, and names it Earth, since the physical part of the character, will be that of a young man, with the height close to his in real life. After creating him, the man realizes that his character doesn't attract as much attention as he does, but he states that he is not the type who would become the main character, especially because he is just a common salary man. And because of his profession, his playing time is at most two or three hours a day, and then he could cause problems if he were to play in a team with other players, in other words, he would be carried on his back by others. And that's the main reason why you play solo, well, now the man chooses his character's skills, and he picks the worst ones, precisely so he doesn't get massacred by other more addicted players. So the guy chooses 10 skills, and 6 of them are bad, his bow barely hits anyone, and as for the herbalist skill, he could buy cheap potions from some random NPC. And this makes this skill quite unnecessary, and your kick is not a special move, that is, it is a blow that does not do much damage, therefore it is inefficient in combat. As for your wind spell, it can be used to attack other elements, except fire, and in addition, this skill has no effect against the earth element, and as for your concealment skill, it has a very high MP cost. But the disadvantage doesn't stop there, as he is still easy to find when he moves, so this concealment doesn't do much good, as he couldn't run with this ability activated. As for improving physical skills, it can be used when running, using weapons and is also useful for creating things, in addition to its use being compatible in several actions, however, it is superficial if you don't use it in the right way. He then reveals that this improvement must be used accompanied by a special ability, to make it worthwhile, and well, with him using his other unfavorable abilities, he will be avoided by other players, and thus, he will be able to follow his path alone. And so he concludes the creation of your character, and he explains the concept of, another free life online which as the name suggests, means enjoying another life, and as this game has no linear mission to be followed, they focus on killing monsters. Furthermore, players can focus on the production and development of items, or if the guy is even more into himself, the player can just chat with other players randomly. And as for Earth, he arrives in a very busy city, and a girl calls him to buy equipment, since he is a new player, and when he went to her tent, some players were already fighting in the skies. And when looking to the sides, Earth realizes he says that he is the only archer in the place, and suddenly a man in gold armor bumps into him, calling him a weakling, and the boy feels that he has fallen into the game without much luck. But he turns around and talks to the guy, and he says that the bow is rubbish, and is surprised by his terrible taste in choosing weapons, they then say that Earth looks more like an NPC, and so he can be sure that no one you'll want him as an ally. And then the boy goes to the equipment tent, and a blue-haired girl stares at him briefly, and well, Earth arrives at the training center, and soon gets excited to train, just like the others. However, when shooting with his bow, the arrow fails, falling pathetically to the ground, and so the boy begins to practice, to improve his situation, but after trying a lot, he cannot hit his target even once. Then he realizes that the bow is worse than he imagined, but he continues shooting, and after shooting 100 arrows, he finally hits the target once, and reaches level 5, and then Earth tests his wind and kick skills, and notes that they improved as he increased his level, and after learning what was necessary, he heads towards the field, but when he gets there the boy notices that the place is a mess, with an angry crowd for some reason, so he decides to go back and focus only on collecting herbs. He then uses his distance vision to see the herbs nearby, but when he picks them up, he can't identify any of them as soon as he picks them up, so Earth decides to go back to examine them more calmly. And in this way, he gradually learned what each one was, and the reason that helped him identify them was the fact that his herbalist skill had increased, this way Earth can see the categories of each of the herbs. And one of them was the choking herb, which when eaten, the herb momentarily stops the person from breathing, leaving them in despair, and after discovering this, Earth is in shock, because he would have been screwed if he had used the herb without evaluate first. And this scare makes him go to the potion store, to buy a medicine production set for beginners, and thus be able to make healing potions, he then returns to his house, and after grinding the herb, he mixes water with the herbs, leftovers and put it on the fire. And so, he manages to make a basic healing potion, and as he is in a game, the production process becomes automatic after making the item once, mass production affects the final quality of the item a little, but the practicality this gets Earth's attention. So he decides to equip himself with this healing potion and an antidote, to prepare for the next day, and by making more potions, his herbalist skill rises to level 7, in addition to this, 
the producer's fingers skill also increases constantly. However, he knows that those potions are sold at low prices by common NPCs, and as it is already a popular item, he decides to earn a living by hunting, and well, the next day he returns to the field. But this time it was empty, and Earth is happy, because he won't have to fight anyone over prey, and speaking of prey, his first prey is a rabbit, he then prepares his bow, and concentrates on getting it right the first time. Because if he makes a mistake, his prey will notice him, consequently will run away and he will lose the hunt, and so he shoots, but ends up missing, so the rabbit notices the danger and goes to attack, and Earth makes another shot, but this time he hits. However, this was not able to stop the rabbit, so Earth kicks it away, and only then manages to reset the enemy's HP, turning it into meat, and upon seeing this, he feels that he will end up becoming a specialist in kicks, and not in bow, even because the bow is really the worst weapon of all. And well, that girl from before appears again, and is accompanied by a red-haired man, who praises Earth's performance on the hunt, but the guy arrives very happy, and Earth asks him what he wants. Then the girl asks why he's laughing so much, and the crazy guy just falls to the ground without being able to say anything, and tells her that he can't stop but finally he explains that he was laughing at the voice the rabbit was making during the fight because I had never seen that before. He then gets up, and the girl apologizes for him, while the boy introduces his friend as Millie, and as for him, the boy's name is Zvi, and they both ask to be his friend. So Earth accepts the request, and Zvi says he will create a group for them to have fun, and says goodbye to him, and the boy goes back to hunting, as he needs to gain more experience, but his prey notices him. And seeing that he wouldn't be able to target the rabbit's blind spot in a sneaky way, Earth goes to him directly, and uses his wind technique, and although he hit him, the boy feels that he needs to be less noticed. Then his concealment ability comes to mind, and he decides it's worth testing, and after activating concealment, Earth lands a critical blow on the rabbit, having caught it off guard. This way he realizes that this skill goes well with his bow, as it compensates for the fact that the bow is a terrible weapon, and so he understands that he has found his path to follow, but he takes the VR away for now. Even because he has to go to work the next day, he can't spend the whole morning playing, and well, the next day he goes back to the game, and walking around Earth City he buys a loaf of bread. And as the game is very evolved, he can taste the food, but soon complains about the taste being terrible, and so he decides to make his own food, Earth buys cutlery and seasonings to prepare his meat. He then puts the meat to grill, and after a few minutes he has his first rabbit steak, but when the boy bites into the first piece, he almost breaks his tooth, because the meat is so hard. And when analyzing it, he discovers that his meat has a production score of 2, that is, he must improve in the kitchen if he wants to eat good meat, and so he does, the boy starts by making slight cuts in his steak. And after putting the meat on the fire, he adds some herbs to remove the strong odor, and well, the meat was ready, and as he had made some cuts, this made it more tender. And when he bites the first piece, the boy feels his meat softer, this time he got it right, and now he got a production score of 5 but Earth still wanted to improve further, so he decided to make another steak, repeating the same processes that previously worked. Then two players smell the meat, and are amazed, and it doesn't take long for everyone around to smell that same smell and wonder where it was coming from. And well, Earth notices that this time he got a 7 in the production score, and is happy with his quick achievement as a group of people surround him, asking to eat the meat he had prepared. But since he's not stupid, he charges 100 glow per steak, which would be 20 times the price of an NPC's bread, but everyone still accepts paying this high price, he then spends all day cooking, and thinks it's hell to have to do this for so long. However, this practice made him reach level 20 of this skill, and with that he learned to cook faster, and this made him serve people more efficiently and with less headaches. And well, he returns home and starts making his own bow, since he couldn't buy this weapon anywhere, he then starts by cutting a wooden bow, and after applying basic care, he applies an anti-slip coating to it. And finally he puts on the strings, but when finishing the weapon, he notices that his bow is too weak to be used on monsters, as it only has 4 attack points, but it is still a more efficient bow than the bow of a beginner. But Earth goes further, he joins 3 pieces of wood, 2 of which are harder, while the other is more flexible, after which the boy sands all the wood well and flexes them, so that they stay glued together. And then he gets a bow with attack power at 12 points, and that makes him satisfied, now Earth will focus on his armor, he goes to the equipment tent and buys one already made. Then he looks at his status again, and notices that he is already at level 25 in cooking, this makes him momentarily happy, but Earth realizes that he spent a lot buying his armor, and will then need to raise more funds. Then his next merchandise will be a great flavored healing potion, he leaves them next to the stake and goes to the field to hunt, and he uses his new bow on his first enemy, 
which in this case is the wolf closest to him. And well, he attacks other monsters, and at the end of the hunt, the boy realizes that his wind and kick magic have also increased, and as he was out of arrows, he decides to return to the city. And getting there, Earth finds notes from people praising his great potion, and asking for more, and this flatters him, but a big problem was about to come. People started shouting asking for potions, and Earth doesn't understand anything, and says that they should be able to buy from NPCs calmly, so he questions Zvi about what that catastrophic event was. And he explains that he heard about the NPCs being out of potions, so Earth asks if this would cause a lot of problems for them, and Zvi answers yes, and reveals that he is the one most affected by this, as people will fall on top of him wanting their potions. And said and done, people start to stare at him, but Zvi says he's on his way, meanwhile Earth negotiates with people, saying they could buy up to 5 potions, each for 40 glow. And when he goes back to the vending machine, the content of the tickets has already changed, people are rushing him, wanting more potion, and well, Zvi finally arrives to stop people, asking Earth to just focus on producing the potions. And then he starts to do more, and reflects on this herbalist skill is very good in these moments, as most people don't have it, as they find it useless, and as he doesn't want any confusion in the game due to a lack of potion, he decides to make this sacrifice for everyone. However, at a certain point his medicinal herbs run out, and Earth tells the players that he can only sell the potions that are left, which everyone understands and asks him to make more the next day. And well, the same snobbish guy from before appears, and asks Earth to sell him all the potions that are left, but the boy scolds him, saying that he needs to queue to buy from him. And then the man goes to the boy, and Zvi enters the middle, to try to calm things down, but he takes a step back, and tells Earth that he will show him what happens when someone turns against him. But the boy doesn't lower his head, and says that the same sentence applies to him too, and then he points to the line with an angry crowd, and the man doesn't understand why everyone is on the boy's side. And Earth says that it wouldn't be good for him to take the potions by force, so the man reveals that he will pay for the items, and the boy says that he should maintain cordiality with the NPCs, as it is from them that he buys his weapons and armor. And in other words, Earth would be suggesting that he not make enemies, so that he would continue to have the possibility of purchasing his materials in the future, but the man did not take that sermon in kind. And Zvi suggests that Earth not enter into a PvP against that man, but the boy thinks that he should not ignore a duel against such an aggressive player, and so his invitation is accepted, and the battle arena materializes. And when looking at his face, the boy notices that the man thinks he has already won the fight, in other words, the guy is underestimating him, and this is great for him, as he will have a better chance of picking up on some of his weaknesses. And well, the first blow is delivered by his enemy, and Earth manages to escape and attacks him next, he sees an opening to hit him with his bow, and the man is indignant, as he is being attacked by an archer up close, which would be an affront. And so he is eliminated, and all the other players celebrate the boy's victory, then Zvi understands that Earth is indeed incredible, and comments to Millie that they should call him, Blue, he then apologizes to everyone for the mess, and states that the next day they will have more potions to buy. And well, the man logs out of the game, and feels satisfied with his new achievements, and comments that that group of mohawks will certainly be ignored by production players, so the man leaves his VR on the table and goes to sleep but a message appears of Zvi calling him to his group. Well, after a few days of what happened due to the lack of potions, the game world changed significantly, and this made your herbalist skill no longer so useless. Because the fact that there are no limits on the items sold by NPCs, made players relive the herbalist skill, and well, he puts on his VR, preparing for another match. Then Zvi greets him, and Earth understands that he is the head of his guild, and says he is happy to have been invited to be a member of it, and Zvi says that everyone there was a member of Blue. Then the first one introduces herself as Nora, a girl with white hair, and she says she is good at hand-to-hand -hand combat using a sword, and well, Earth, when looking at her, notices that the girl is very thin. Then Zvi tells him not to say certain words around her, such as, bored, and, smooth, as this could trigger triggers in her, making things very ugly for him. As for the big guy, he introduces himself as Rage, a tank who uses a one-handed axe and shield, and he says he is good at attracting the enemy's attack, and as for the last member, he introduces himself as Kazamine, and he claims to be a swordsman who uses a one-handed sword, and then Earth introduces himself to his new friends, but when he was about to say what his weapon is, he is interrupted by Nora, who says that he is an archer. Then Rage goes to him and says that he is already known by everyone, as they were aware of his fight against the snob from before, and everyone was amazed at his great skill with the bow, with it being the worst weapon in the game. But Earth feels that they are giving him too much credibility, after all, for him, his enemy only had few skills, 
and this makes him feel that he caught people's attention in a negative way. So he decides to skip the presentation, since everyone knows him, and he sticks with the formation chosen by Svi, as the combination consists of four people on the front line, and a magic user accompanied by an archer. And for Earth, this would be a very unbalanced combination, but Nora explains that Millie uses magic with multiple attributes, in addition, Nora claims to be able to use healing magic, so Earth begins to understand them in a more organized way. And well, he questions what they will do today, and Rage says that they are hunting the wild bear, so Earth asks if he would be a strong enemy, and Zvi says yes, but he believes they can do the job. However, Earth is confused and doesn't understand where all his confidence comes from, so Zvi touches him on the shoulder, and says that he's in his group now, now it's explained why he has so much confidence. And well, Earth shows nervousness about this, as it is his first time facing a wild bear, and he says that bears are usually fast and intelligent, and with that in mind Earth wonders if this monster wouldn't be very problematic. But Zvi doesn't listen to anything he says, and tells the guild that after the hunt is over, they will have the privilege of eating the delicious food made by Earth, and then he calls everyone to the mission. Well, they arrive in the forest, and Earth uses his ability to see from afar, to locate the targets, and he comments to the group that the bears are all in groups, and that would be a problem. However, soon after he manages to notice one of them alone, so Zvi says that they must lure him out, so that they can fight in a favorable environment. And Kazamine praises Earth's distance vision ability, saying it was very useful, and he reveals that bringing him into the group was actually a wise choice. In this Zvi boasts, as if Meredith was all his, so Earth gives the smart guy an earful, and well, Zvi asks Millie to use her support magic, and so she does. As for Earth, he says he will use his concealment ability to get away without being noticed, and after gaining a good distance, he hits the bear with his arrow. And then Rage takes over the fight from there, using his art of controlling hatred to provoke the bear's attack. Earth understands everything about this, because by attracting all the bear's hatred towards him, Rage manages to protect his friends. And meanwhile, Earth aims at the bear in a safer position, and the tank starts to be attacked by the bear, so Millie comes to his aid, restoring all of his HP with her healing magic. Nora then attacks the monster with the art, backstab but soon realizes that the bear's skin is really tough so there would be no way for her to pierce it with a short-range sword. And seeing that her friends are in trouble, Millie decides that she should attack too, and she uses her fire magic called Fire Lance, but unfortunately for her, the bear becomes even angrier about it. However, Rage attracts the monster to him again, and his friends are worried, as they didn't imagine he was so strong, and Zvi regrets it, as he didn't prepare enough for that duel. And to make matters worse, Nora was running out of MP, so Earth starts to analyze the situation, to see if he can make an accurate decision as soon as possible, and he bets that the monster's weak point is the head, and decides to aim his attack at that area. And then he shoots his arrow and hits, but again the bear is out of control, and Earth realizes that that wasn't his weak point, and realizing that they were going to die there, he decides to use a last resort. He activates his spell, Sicare Ventus. Wind Booster, which would be a spell obtained at level 15 of Wind Magic, which has the function of increasing your movement speed. And with that he plants an arrow in his foot and jumps at the bear's head, hitting him in the head with impressive speed. And to finish, Millie hits him again with her Fire Lance, and so they finally defeat him, then Nora sighs with relief, saying that that was a tough enemy, and Zvi says that he didn't imagine the bear was so strong. But Earth tells him not to heat it up, as now they already have the meat to eat, and when he says this everyone's mouths water, so Earth prepares the meat skewers for the guild. However, Zvi complains that only he received a loaf of bread, and Earth explains that he did it to take one with his face, after all, Zvi enjoys being the class clown, so he would only be trying his own medicine. But after playing with him, Earth decides to give Zvi a skewer too, and Nora questions whether food recipes are usually expensive, and Earth explains that there is no price for it. Because the producers have in mind that recipes should not be sold, and Kazamine asks why the producers do things this way. So Earth explains that making a recipe requires time and a lot of money, in addition the dish can turn out different, even if the person follows the same recipe, as the correct result of the recipe has to do with the effort and ingenuity of the person who made it. And with all this in mind, the producers came to the conclusion that they wanted to imitate the production quality of his recipes, and so Nora understands that even if she bought Earth's recipe, she wouldn't be able to make a skewer as good as his. Zvi then comes up with the idea of asking Earth to cook for them for a low price, as this would solve all their problems, but he doesn't seem to like this idea. And Zvi ignores his complaint, and says that him joining the group was the best idea they had, and well, after the mission was a success, they planned to return home. But first Rage asks Ad Earth as a friend, and then everyone else asks for the same, and when he notices that he is making friends in the game, 
he falls flat on his face, after all his path as a lone wolf had ended there. And well, the next day he heads to the forest in the fifth area, and when trying to hit a common bee, he hits a pedrosa ant, which has the ability to connect. And this terrifies him, because this ability allows him to call his companions instantly, and the ant actually does this, leaving Earth with no choice but to fight. And then he tries to kick the ant, but he is soon electrocuted and attacked by the enemy to death, and after that, he is forced to return to the city, and although he was saddened by this, Earth knows that he died because of his arrogance and arrogance, and decides he'll get smarter about this. And well, he receives an official notice from the game, which talked about an update that the game would receive, called Dance with the Fairies, and it would bring new skills and arts, as well as increased production possibilities. Other than that, they could also have fairies to assist them, and Earth notices two other players commenting on the update, and they say that this update is certainly related to battles, and not to ball and dances. And Earth, upon hearing this, still sees some advantage, as everyone will have the chance to level up, and with that, he understands that this is not the time to keep dying in the game. And after a long death penalty, Earth would have learned the blacksmithing skill, and he uses this to craft an arrow that is effective against the stone ant. He first prepared two types of iron, the first of which was a basic iron for piercing, the second was to give more blunt damage, and that's why he used a purer iron. And finally, he gets an arrow with a simple appearance, but when he attaches this iron tip to the tip of the wooden arrow, he will have an iron arrow with attack 7. And after that, he made an arrowhead in the shape of an apple, and finishes the inventions for today, now Earth is looking for some way to improve his kicks, as he believes that other enemies that deal retribution damage will emerge, besides the Ant Pedrosa. And as the kick tends to be a weaker attack, this makes him prioritize increasing the strength of this blow, and well, his idea to make kick stronger is actually quite simple. Earth believes that placing seven thick and short spikes on the soles of the shoes, and placing blades on the sides, will solve the problem, and so he starts working on it, looking for the best blade shape. And then Black goes to him and asks what those blades were for, and Earth tells him to wait for the result, and finally he finishes his project, so Black looks at that object with a look of surprise. Because I've never seen auxiliary equipment for kicks, two guys appear there and ask if that object is a shoe or a weapon, and Earth says it's both, and then the boys praise his genius. And after that, he goes to Myun to buy a bowstring, and the girl notices the different shoes that Earth was wearing, and says that they were pretty scary for a cook to wear. Then he laughs and thanks him for the bowstring so he goes home thinking that he should specialize more in the bow and closes it, after all his bow skill has reached 30. And he starts to wonder which bow is the best to use, then he realizes that the short bow is easy to use, but its range is very low, and that wouldn't be good for him, since fighting at close range isn't good. Your strength. Longbows have more range and power, but his problem is the delay in drawing the bow, and this is a disadvantage for those who play alone, so with all this in mind, Earth decides that he will make a hunting bow, as it would be his best option. And then he uses three of his experience points to specialize his level 30 archery, to level 1 with hunting bow, and because it is an advanced skill, his attack power will also increase. And well, he gets excited to start producing his hunting bow, until Black comes to him again to ask if he was producing something. And Earth explains that he will make a new bow, but upon seeing the materials the boy was using, Black wonders if he will make another crazy bow like before. And Earth explains that the fun of the game is creating something that would be impossible in real life, and Black agrees with this statement, saying that this is the best part of creating items. And after a while of work, he finally finishes his new bow, and names it, X Hunting Compound Bow, and when testing his new weapon, Earth confirms that it is ready for use, and feels that the power of attack also increased a lot. However, he goes to his old bow and thanks him for having accompanied him until then, and at dawn, he goes to test the strength of his new bow, and entering the forest, Earth finds a stony ant. And when he notices that she is unable to call for reinforcements, he attacks her, managing to defeat her with two arrows, and after that, he destroys some more of these ants. And then he takes the ant's exoskeleton to Myun, as its material is used to make light armor, and he will want one, and well, the official notice appears, saying that the dance with the fairies was about to begin. But before that, players would need to go through the contract part with the fairies, and then the contract crystal appears in the sky, leaving Earth in awe of its beauty. And he says that as an archer he wants to make a contract with some wind fairy, but since he can't choose, he just hopes that his will is done, and begins the contract. However, the crystal fails, and Zvi calls him, asking if Earth is free, and he reveals that he ended up failing in the contract with the fairies, and as for Zvi and the guild members, they all got their fairies. And Kazamine says that he didn't expect that an acquaintance of his wouldn't be able to sign the contract, 
but Millie reassures Earth saying that that was just the first part of the mission, so there will be a second part. And besides, she explains that the failed items didn't disappear, and that means there's a good chance he can try the contract again in the second part, and Zvi says that Millie is right but he wonders why all the fairies are stuck together in Earth. And then everyone gets jealous of him, calling him a fairy catcher, and Earth says fairies are really cute, so he hopes he gets a second chance to have his own. Well, Earth rests below from a tree, and is soon surprised by a fairy, who goes there to stay with him, and he notices that the fairies have strangely been liking him a lot lately. And he apologizes to the fairy, saying that he can't sign a contract with them, because his crystal had broken, and so the fairy goes to his crystal, to play. And when looking at their statuses, Earth notices that the level of their skills has risen, and with that he says that he will be able to learn superior skills, and this makes him excited. So Earth will have the chance to master new skills, and will be able to fight in different ways, well, after that he decides that he will go on his first exploration of a dungeon. And upon entering the cave, Earth remembers that he used to explore places like this when he was young, and well, he continues on, when suddenly he is warned that a threat has been detected. But he manages to get through without too many problems, and he remembers his childhood again, and says that this type of danger used to make him excited, as he felt the adrenaline of not knowing how far the darkness of the cave went. And he believed he could never have that kind of experience again, and then he stops and notices a red light coming from the depths of the darkness, and then a giant spider appears and attacks. And Earth remembers that he is now in a world of adventure, provided by video games, and so he attacks the spider before it gets close and throws it away. However, she gets up, leaving him amazed, so he decides to use high jump, a skill that Earth has just learned for this occasion, but he misses the blow and hits his head on the ceiling, and decides to finish the spider with a real kick. And after the fight, a purple light appears, and makes him wonder if they were dark fairies, so to get the story straight, he decides to follow them, and Earth arrives at a difficult place to pass, and remembers that that was a path he would never have been able to go through before. However, with his ability to stabilize the center of gravity, he is able to stabilize the balance of his body, allowing Earth to pass through difficult areas where he requires more stability from his body. Well, upon arriving at the place where the fairies were taking him, he notices that there are many fairies there, and wonders if they are harboring any objects there. And then they disperse from the place, and it reveals that there was a rock, and when Earth moves it, he discovers a secret door, and in that he takes a box that was hidden behind that door. And inside there was an old ring, so Earth wonders what to do with that object, and even without knowing what it is for, he keeps the ring in his pocket, and thanks the fairies, because thanks to them, he acquired an item different. And well, he receives a message from the administrators, and they said that they were about to announce the second part of the ball with the fairies, and this time the name would be, Battle with the Fairies. And upon returning to the city, all the players look at the sky, and the administrators explain that now their fairies would evolve if they just needed to participate and win some PvP fights. And with these evolutions, fairies could take new forms however, the administrator explains that if they keep fighting with the same person, this evolution will not happen, and she says that this is an excellent opportunity for the players to fight each other competitively. And she says that the top 16 of the special PvP will be invited to the tournament, and she explains that this tournament will grant special prizes to the winners, in addition, the game will have a lot of new things in its new update. And well, she advises them to win titles and stand out from other players, and explains that each player can win special titles depending on their style of play. As for those who fail to make contracts with the fairies, she says that they will be able to repair their contract crystal with special PvP, and these repaired crystals would have a guaranteed success rate, so there is no risk of the player being left without a fairy. But in addition, these crystals will also have a greater chance of giving a rare fairy to your player, and she says that with the unlocking of the fairy's self-identity, they will act in different ways. And well, having said all that, the administrator reveals that the game's latest update, called, The Fairy Battle Championship, is about to arrive, and she tells players to keep an eye on the game's official website for more details. And looking around, Earth notices that everyone is very excited, and although he is too, he wonders if this will work, after all, many players don't like PvP. And he says he hopes that people don't bother people who don't like this type of game, well, he goes to the blacksmith, and the man explains to him that there is no problem in PvP mode, and that Earth shouldn't be so worried therefore. And he explains that the artisans agreed to warn everyone if some players wanted to force them to duel in PvP, and that would put everyone at ease. After all, no one would be stupid enough to go against an entire guild, so Earth says he's happy to know that, and the blacksmith asks if the boy had gone to the new city, and he says yes, and says it's called, Nexia City. And the blacksmith comments that they placed a teleportation portal in the place, 
which allows people to go there and back freely, and he explains that that's where the players who are crazy about PvP are going. And apparently they will get together to fight there, so as not to disturb those who don't like this type of game, and this makes Earth a little apprehensive, as dividing into groups is an online-oriented style of play. And then he asks if the blacksmith will also fight in the first, and he says no, as he thinks that being a craftsman suits his personality better, so he will leave the fight to the other players. And well, Earth imagines that there are several ways to enjoy an event, and this leaves him thinking about what he should do. Well, after the first day of the update arrived, Earth hadn't logged in for a long time, and he says that the game may already have additional titles, and when the other players look at it, they start to think that it has some rare title. And then he opens his status panel to check this, and he comes across a title called Fairy Groomer, which is basically a title given to those who are loved by fairies. And this title cannot be unequipped, unless the player fights in a special PvP during the event, and upon reading this, Earth falls to the ground in shame, saying that he wasn't even aware of that. And besides, all the players were looking at him with a certain repulsion, after all, a title like that really attracts a lot of attention, and that worries Earth. But he remembers that to remove it, all he had to do was he fights in PvP, and then he shouts asking for someone to fight him, and a girl named Rona sends him a PvP request, making him cry with happiness. And well, the girl introduces herself to him, and calls him by his name, so he asks if she knows him, and she says yes, and explains that she is a member of Blue Color, which is Vi's guild. And Rona explains that she normally uses martial arts in fights, and because Earth uses kicks, she says that this caught his attention, and then he understands why she agreed to fight with him, and thanks her for the PvP. Well, before the fight starts, Rona's bird comes to him, and looks at him showing admiration, and Earth asks if he would like to tell him something, and then Rona explains that his animal is usually shy, and him having that attitude is quite atypical. And then the bird stops the fight, showing that it has no interest in fighting Earth, and Rona is confused, after all the bird had never shown what it thinks, not even to her. And he lands on Earth again, so everyone around says that he is in fact a fairy recruiter, so the title wasn't a lie, but Earth tries to convince people otherwise, to guarantee his reputation among the other players. And he asks someone else to fight him, but the result remained the same, the fairies didn't want to fight him, and so Earth wonders if there was any way to force a fairy to fight him. But he still didn't achieve anything, and Rona says she's never seen a player like that before, well, after that they miss each other, until Rona sends him a message again. And she asks him for advice, but before revealing what it would be, Earth already knew that she would talk about her fairy, who was no longer eating, and asks if she would like him to make food that fairies like. And Rona admits that that was it, and asks how he knew that, and Earth explains that he knows that because he has a lot of people on his server asking for the same thing. And she questions him about how that would have happened, and then he explains that a man was serving bread to the fairies, but they were no longer eating it. So he asks Earth to prepare something that the fairies can eat, after all he is the guy who makes the best steak in the game, and he says he would never abandon him, and so Earth prepared a kara ague, a hearty meal that would certainly would please the fairy. However, after the people discovered his ability, everyone wanted to buy his kara ague, causing him to become overwhelmed. Well, the next day, he asks Rona to help him in the kitchen, and thanks her for her willingness to help but she says that she should be the one to thank, as Earth made fairy food for her too. And he explains that thanks to her help, orders had decreased, and also says that now there are more cooks making fairy food, and that's why Earth says it was time to close the store. And then Rona asks if he would do something after that, and he says he would like to do something different, after all he had been making food the whole time, so she gives him the idea of going with her to see a new city. And upon arriving there, he recognizes the place as the city of Nexia, and Rona says that PvP clashes are taking place in front of them, and within that blue circle, a man shows that he is convinced of victory against his opponent. And before the fight began, Rona note that that wolf fairy is a little strange, well, the first player starts a wind attack, which is then blocked, then he goes for a melee attack. And Earth notices that the other player has good manual defenses, and says that it is not a block provided by the game system itself, and well, the player asks his fairy to attack with his fire magic. However, the fairy remains motionless, looking at a static location. Rona and Earth are confused when they see that the fairy denied their player's command, and then the other player takes the opportunity to attack him, and ultimately wins the battle. And Rona questions why the fairy ignored her master's command, so Earth explains that that player is a fairy slaver, and holds that label for treating his fairies abusively. And Earth explains that when the master treats the fairies rudely or hits them, the fairies start to ignore his orders, but Earth says that this is more than deserved for these types of players. And well, the player gets angry and raises his hand to hit his fairy, 
and Earth says that something very bad was about to happen, and says that he saw in a video a fairy slaver mistreating his fairy, and Earth explains that if the player mistreats much to his fairy he will end up getting into a fight with her, as a penalty. And in the video in question, the fairy transforms into an even bigger tiger, and kills its master, and Earth explains that if the master loses the fight, the fairy will take his contact crystal, and all data related to fairies, will be deleted from the player. And well, the slaver player swears and walks away, and Earth says that he probably already knew that, and Rona reveals that she is only now learning about it, but Earth says that in old game systems, there were already issues like that. In this case, if the player gave meaningless and constant orders, his vassals would get out of control and attack you, and he says that this is not common in current games, as companies try to be as light as possible with players. And Earth says that possibly the ADMs want to give an air similar to old games for that game, and well, he says he was already tired for today, and says he will leave, and Rona says goodbye to him, and thanks him for the Kara ague. And on another day, the middle-aged man picks up his RV again, and reflects on the fact that there are people who treat his fairy well, like Rona, but he says that there are also those who don't take good care of them, like example that player from before. And speaking of him, the player asks to talk to Earth, as he noticed that he has the title of fairy groomer, and he says that he would like to reconcile with his fairy, and then asks him for some advice. And the player says that he saw that video where the owner was attacked by his fairy, and says that if he doesn't do anything, he will end up having the same end as that guy, and then Earth starts asking why he treats the fairy like that. And the player explains that he didn't know how to treat the fairy, and when he saw other players treating them like circus beasts, he started to treat his own in the same way, and Earth explains that they had a change in temperament after the update, and that's why his fairy stopped listening to him. Then the player confirms that this occurred after the update the same, and as his fairy began to no longer obey you, he says he began to beat her, in order to comply with his orders. But he confesses that this really wasn't the right thing to do, and goes back to begging Earth for advice, saying that anything he says will do. And well, he says he will give him some advice, and says that he should decide whether he will follow it or not, and the player thanks him and asks what he should do. And Earth explains that he doesn't need to do anything much, and says that treating the fairy like his friend is enough, and he explains that they need to do things together, and after each fight, he should congratulate her saying that he did a good job, so I could have a good relationship with her. And furthermore, he suggests that they eat together too, as that will help. And then he questions if he was the fairy baiting cook, but Earth asks him not to call him that. And the player says that he would like him to do something that his fairy would like, and Earth complies with the request, so the player takes one of the snacks and gives it to his fairy, who, by the way, was already defensive with him. However, when she smells the food, she eats it, and Earth says that that was enough for them to start getting along, and the player thanks her for the help, and apologizes to her fairy. And well, a man named Silver catches Earth's attention, and asks to talk to him alone. Earth takes you to a place, Tozo they can talk better, and the boy notices that the player's equipment is first class, and then he deduces that he is one of the best players, who plays extremely well. And well, Silver says he will be direct, and asks if Earth has ever seen a man called Glad, and the boy replies no, and he comments that this player is after the fairy recruiter, and because Earth has that title in his head, Silver figured it would be him. And then he asks who this Glad guy was, and he says that he was a regular member of his group, and although they had problems due to his bad behavior, Glad was a very skilled tank. And Earth understands that this warrior should no longer be part of Silver's group because the Lord is talking about him in the past, and he says that Earth is right, and explains that Glad was gradually becoming very arrogant. And with that he started to look down on others, but when this new game event started, Glad was the only one who wasn't able to sign a contract with a fairy. And this left him frustrated, causing him to start taking it out on everyone, and as leader, Silver's only option at that moment was to banish him from the group. But he still had something worse to say, but he called one person. To proceed. Well, Earth notices that the man called a Valkyrie of Light, which in this case is a fairy in perfect humanoid form, and after calling her, Silver continues explaining the situation, and says that Glad was not reassured by any of his words of support. However, after the last update, he managed to get a new contract crystal, and made a contract with a dark fox, in which he began to challenge several people in special PvPs without stopping. And then Earth understands that even after getting his fairy, Glad continued to feel the humiliation he felt at the beginning of the event, and Silver says that he will possibly want to show his strength in the championship on the last day of the event. And he asks Earth to be careful not to get involved with him, 
and the boy says he will be careful about that while Silver explains that he needs to fix Glad during the championship, and well, after you leave, Earth says that he won't trust him 100%, after all it's unreliable to believe in stories that he only knows one version of. Well, the next day he goes hunting, and because he was hunting, Glad couldn't go and attack him, as that goes against the terms of service, so he understands that if he stays there, he will be safe, so the boy starts to attack a wild bear, and uses his mirror arrow technique to knock it down. Then he finishes him off with his blade boot, and says that this new technique he learned is very useful, but still, he feels a little overwhelmed having to hunt the bears alone. Well, he opens his stats, and increases his kick attack, in which Earth gains his first kick technique, called sliding charge, and he comments that the last update he had in the skills UI, made this area easier to use, to understand. And after that, Earth decides to proceed to a mine near Nexia, to look for ores, as his objective is to make steel or light metal, and he explains that there is something he wants to do with these materials, so he starts mining with more determination, until out of nowhere he hits an explosive ore, and warns everyone to be careful. Well, he manages to get the ore and reassures everyone, saying that everything is fine, and one of the miners thanks Earth for his kindness in finding a way for the ore not to explode, and the boy explains that if it exploded, everyone would die and return to the city as the area of effect of that ore is very extensive. And one of the players complains about this, saying that the devs should reduce the explosion range of that ore, but he feels relieved to have people who can deal with it, and calls Earth the bomb meter. And after leaving the mine, he goes to Black, to borrow his forge again, and the blacksmith asks if the boy would forge something weird again, and Earth says that it's very rude to call his creations weird, but Black wishes him good luck in his new creation. Well, Earth begins preparations, and comments that he will create a new arrowhead, and also a metal whip in which he begins to create a twisted tip, so that he can pierce flesh more easily. But when trying to do it, Earth notices that it is difficult to get the tip into a decent twisted shape, and so he decides to discard the tip he was making and move on to the next attempt. And he stays at it until daylight, and finally, Earth manages to make a point with the planned shape, and then he goes to the whip, and he keeps designing this equipment until the end of the afternoon, and when he gets there, Black asks if that it was Earth's ultimate equipment. And the boy says yes, and says that he made everything with light metal, as this material is very light and flexible, just like bamboo, so it is perfect for making a whip. And the blacksmith is amazed at Earth's talent, and says that it must have been a lot of work. And the boy confirms that he is, because he can't even lift his arms, well, he says goodbye to Black, and goes to the lower room of his house to work with the explosive ore. And he reveals that he didn't know there was an underground room in the process room, and says that this room will be very useful, because if he fails and the ore explodes, he won't involve anyone in this, well, he puts the ore under the table, and confesses that the risk of it exploding is very high, but Earth feels that it would be a waste not to make use of it. Furthermore, he wants to find out how far he can go with his herbalist skill, but in the real world, he doesn't have much knowledge in exact sciences, and using his intelligence in a way he doesn't usually use makes him very tired. And well, he starts the project by mixing oil and herbs with a piece of ore, to adjust the speed at which it burns, and after that he makes three different potions, and goes outside, with the intention of testing them and seeing which is the best. And then he starts with potion A, but it doesn't even ignite, that is, Earth has already started failing, so he throws potion B, and this one works so well that it takes away 80% of his HP, so this is a potion that he should only use as a last resort, and he names it, Mind's Infernal Oil. And well, after healing himself, he tests potion C, and it meets all his expectations, as the potion is perfect to use only against the enemy, after all it won't explode him either. And after that, Earth will test the bomb on his hunts, and he is already taking the opportunity to test the new equipment he made at the blacksmith's house, well, the result was very satisfactory for him, as those new resources made hunting much easier, but he understands that he cannot depend solely on that, because otherwise your skills won't improve. And when looking at his stats, he notices that two of his skills have evolved, and they would be the hunting bow skill and wind magic, in addition, Earth has learned two new techniques, called, Gatling Arrow, and, Fly. In this he analyzes the wind hunting bow technique, 
and understands that it is an elemental technique, which adds magical properties to his weapon. And although he was more interested in stronger wind spells, he notes that spells are only for him. Give support. Therefore he will opt for bow and wind magic, as he thinks it will be a good combination. And this way he will have space to choose the elemental weapons, and then he confirms his choice with the game twice in a row. After that he tests his Gatling Arrow technique, and is amazed at how practical it is, as he could shoot several times in a row, well, then he tests fly, and deduces that having it as a wind support spell will be very useful. And after the hunt, Earth goes to Myun, and asks her to make a leather cape with the items he brought, so that he can reduce the damage he receives from behind, and well, an announcement from the developers appears in the sky, and the girl explains that they are completing the calculation of the PvP score for the fairy event. And meanwhile, Zvi and Millie appear to talk about the fairy event, and he comments that no one from their guild dedicated themselves to this event, so probably none of them will go to the championship, and Earth says that they only have 16 spots, that is, the chance of them being selected is even lower. And well, the announcer presents the names of those who will participate in the championship, and the names of Glad and Silver catch Millie's attention, as they are two players with a very high victory rate and battle numbers. And upon seeing these names and knowing their history, Earth is worried, but still, the boy feels excited to see them fighting, well, everyone gathers on the special championship server, and Millie comments that most of the players look be there. Then Earth takes the opportunity to use his distance vision, and notices that there are other fairy recruiters like him, and this already makes him calmer, well, the event presenter announces the first fight, and then the area is surrounded by a blue sphere. In this, Zvi comments that the level of the fighters is so high, that their fight becomes incredible to watch, in addition, he says that their fairies have also evolved in that time, and well, Earth thinks that if he had entered the championship, he I would be lucky to win 10% of my games. And after finishing the first fight, Earth notices that there are particles of light going from the fairy that lost to the one that won, and says that this effect didn't have in PvP, and then he wonders what's going on there, well, the fights go on, continuing, until we reached the final. And just as Earth expected, the final is between Silver and Gad, and you say you are there to correct him, and your opponent questions how he will do that, and Silver says he will correct him by destroying Glad, and the battle begins, with this very calm atmosphere. And Glad notices that his opponent isising his axe to attack and unbalance him, and says that he's already smart with that cheap trick, after all he's seen it many times, then the two of them clash their magic, leaving everyone in the audience excited. And Earth remembers that Silver's objective was to take responsibility for ending Glad, but he feels that he won't be able to win, and so he tries to attack with his Moon Crescent technique, but Glad dodges the attack with Wind Boost. And Earth is impressed to see that the guy knew how to use Wind Magic, and well, Glad takes advantage of Silver's instability and attacks him with Cross Line, and so he emerges victorious from the match, and says he's even with the crown. There, Zvi comments that the two seem to have the same strength, and Earth says that it was only the desire for victory that differentiated them, and well, Glad's fairy evolves, and he asks her to be more useful now, but she refuses to do so. Continue with it, and explains that the purpose of that event was to select the next ruler of the fairies, and that someone must be a strong person and versed in the art of war, and upon hearing this, Glad doesn't give a damn, and the fairy explains that fairies are peaceful creatures, and that's why they gain experience fighting with humans, and the winner gets the loser's experience. In this they would follow this cycle until there was only one fighter left, who in the end would become king, and the fairy reveals that she is that person, and Glad invokes herself, saying that she is only discarding him now because it is more convenient but the fairy he explains that he is only moving away from him because their contract is up. Furthermore, she reminds him that Glad only wanted to get revenge on Silver, and since that happened, she wouldn't be of any use to him either, other than that, the fairy says that she was never his partner, she was more like a tool, like that. Like Glad was also just a tool she used to become queen. At this he gets even angrier, and says that he is not a tool, and then the fairy devils these words for him, and says that for him that world may just be a game but for her, that is her real world. And upon hearing these words, Earth and Millie realize that that fairy queen doesn't sound like an AI talking, 
and this makes him theorize that she is an experiment project or research, but then he feels that it is wrong to think about these things, and decides to stop. And well, the fairy queen tells Glad that she will give him a reward, in this case it would be 300,000 glow and a championship prize, in addition, she will also allow him to make a new contract with a strong fairy, just like her before her evolution. However, he refuses to accept this offer, and positions himself for combat, and then the fairy says that if he defeats her, she will be able to continue accompanying him, but if he loses, he will have neither the extra money nor another fairy. And even with these conditions he continues to confront her, calling her to fight, after all he wanted to make her obey him based on strength. Then the battle begins and the fairy starts appealing, launching several techniques at the same time, and this surprises Vi, who wonders how she can summon the techniques so quickly. Furthermore, all of her attacks have five moves, well, Glad manages to get away with using fly, but when going up, the fairy dodges and attacks him with shock, then she invokes high explosion, and even though she is at her limit, Glad still intended to fight. However, she attacks him even more, with the lightning technique, in which he falls to his knees, and she invokes several joint techniques, which ends up putting him on the ground, whereupon the fairy goes to him, and asks if he will still fight, even though it has one of HP, but he gives up, and the fairy leaves the rest to silver, and the man says that he was the one who should have punished him, and the fairy says that there are still three people who need to receive their rewards, in this earth and two other players are teleported to the arena. And the fairy thanks them for refusing to fight, even if it meant not evolving their fairies, and she explains that their evolution should be a reward for the battle, and says that she wanted some of the fairies not to fight. And as a thank you to them, she will increase their fairy level, and as for earth, she says he will fight her once, and this reward leaves him more confused than happy. After being called to a duel against the fairy queen, Earth apologizes and asks her to explain better what she was trying to say, and then she says that he participated in the entire event with a fairy by his side, and so she couldn't simply offer him a reward. For the fairy queen he must go through the experience of fighting her, and she explains that regardless of whether he wins or not, she will grant him part of her power, but if he wins, she will give him even more power, and Earth readily accepts the offer. And meanwhile, everyone around is watching the two carefully, and he thinks about how he could beat her, after all, she is very strong and uses several powerful magics, and Earth scores the high explosion magic as the darkest, and says that his advantage is that he has already seen her fight once. Furthermore, Earth also deduces that this is her first time fighting an archer, however he feels that her poor skills won't help him now, and he also fears that the fight will last too long, as she will be able to adapt to the archer's style, his combat, and when analyzing the situation he understands that there is no fair way to win the fight, and so Earth decides that he will have to cheat if he wants to win, well, she asks if he is ready, and the boy takes out his bow and says that is ready, then they start to face each other and the blue barrier takes over the arena again. And when the fight starts, he uses the sliding charge skill to skid in the other direction and decides to start attacking with 70% of his strength just to test it, but the fairy uses the wind cutter skill to try and stop Earth's arrow. However, he notices that 70% strength was enough to cancel her ability, so he plans to use his full strength next time, but the fairy attacks him first using the fire lance ability and then he dodges all attacks, and hits the fire with his arrow, which goes through it and hits the fairy. And when they see this, Earth's friends are impressed, and the fairy understands that she is at a disadvantage at that distance, as it is the ideal distance for Earth to nullify her magic, she then uses the wind booster to get closer to him, but he I was already expecting her to take this action, and then Earth takes one of her potions. And the fairy tries to stop him from drinking the potion with her shock attack, but Earth manages to dodge it, as he was already smart about it, after all it was the same blow she used against Glad, and well, he releases the potion, and the fairy notes that it is actually poison. And this is the death potion, a potion made from the asphyxiation herb. Then he jumps towards her, and says that the fairy is incapable of casting spells within that poison mist, then he throws more potions, and she says that it ended up containing an error by not restricting the use of items, and Earth says that because he is a weak human, he needs to try harder to think of strategies to fight someone strong. 
And well, she decides to use an ability called Worth Wall to protect herself from him. But Millie says that that way she wouldn't be able to attack him either, and she wonders what he's going to do now. And then he disappears out of nowhere, and Zvi says that she understood his plan and explains that Earth used concealment. And unlike the spectators, the queen couldn't see him, and in the meantime, she wonders if Earth wouldn't attack her soon, and in addition, she notices that his presence suddenly disappeared, and then theorizes that he was biding his time. Of her magic ends, and she believes that if that is the case, she should attack soon, so the fairy breaks the wall and tries to attack him, but she attacks the wind, and Earth appears behind her, saying that she is full of gaps in her attacks, and then he arrests her and then destabilizes her. Then Earth uses his sliding charge ability to skid to her feet, and strikes her, causing the fairy queen to fall to the ground, and then he attacks her with gadding arrow, and uses his gadding arrow ability, mirror arrow, to project two more of his own, so his damage would be tripled. But the appeal doesn't end there, then he attacks her with twin fanged arrow, and then Earth jumps towards her and attacks her with arrow twister, and not satisfied he goes at her at full speed with the his wind booster and finishes the massacre with a kick. The fairy is disbelieved, but there's nothing she can do, she really lost the fight, and after the barrier disappears, Earth remembers that he was being seen by a lot of people, and feels embarrassed, so the fairy gets up and says that he completely defeated her, as she could see that she had a lot of overconfidence, and she says that that fight served as a learning experience for her. And then she asks him to show her the broken contract crystal and the base for the fairy king's ring, and at first he doesn't understand what she's talking about, but soon he remembers the ring he found earlier, and gives it to her, in that the fairy notices that there are five lights in the contract crystal, and says that he is a very unpredictable guy. And well, she throws the crystal into the sky and tells the children of light to appear, and then another light appears there, and she explains to Earth that the crystal has six lights now, and this would be her gift to him, and then she concludes what he was doing, and fuses the crystal to the ring. Then the fairy explains that that ring would be his reward, but Earth notices something a little strange there, after all she was trying to put the ring on the ring finger of his left hand, and when she saw that he was resisting, the fairy tries to put the ring on his left hand, one way or another, and says he wouldn't lose anything from it. And he responds that he has his sanity to lose in this game, but she says that she still won't give up on that, and uses the firearm skill, in which she manages to forcefully put the ring on his finger, and she asks him to may he take good care of his gift. And well, he looks at the statuses, and notices that the name of the item is, the Ring of the 87th Fairy Queen, and it is an item that contains the power of six elemental fairies, besides, there is only one ring like that in the world, and also cannot be unequipped in any way. And after getting what she wanted, the fairy returns to her kingdom, and everyone applauds the spectacle of that event, and Zvi says that in the end they even had a good romantic comedy, to close the event with a flourish. And so, the fairy ball event comes to an end, well, after the event many things changed in that virtual world, and Earth comments that his battle against the Queen was featured on the game's official website, and this caused the way of seeing wind magic and the bow item to change, and with that's why other players started playing like him too. And this whole exposure made Earth known, so he started to dedicate himself to the game in isolation, so as not to attract so much attention, but the Queen prevents him from being alone, and goes to pay him a visit, and she explains that that ring is a teleportation point, and she explains that she is there to offer him company and love, since he is lonely and without any fairies, and upon hearing this he is slightly scared, but she says that she is just playing with his face, and Earth hits her with the his fan, and tells the queen to return to her country soon. However, the girl complains, saying that she doesn't want to, because being queen is very boring, and she wants to relax a little with him, which Earth regrets, after all her days of peaceful play were about to end. And well, the next day the other players recognize him on the street, and call Earth the husband of the fairy queen, then another guy tries to intimidate him, commanding him, but he goes on his way ignoring him, especially because the guys are in a game, there wouldn't be much for the other player to do. And then seeing that he wouldn't be able to stay calm in the city, he decides that the best thing to do is go hunting, and besides, Earth comments that he has something he wants to test, well, he remembers that he had mentioned to the fairy about the magic, Prism Nova, 
and says that it is a magic that can only be used while he is wearing the ring. However, he says he doesn't know anything more than that, and the fairy just says that if he wants to know what that magic is about he would have to test it, and well, he asks all the fairies to hear his voice, and he says that his prayers belong to the fairies, along with his great desire. And then he prepares to make his request, but first, he offers part of his mana to the great ruler of the fairies, and asks her to give power to his soul, so that he has guaranteed protection at that moment, and he asks so that this protection, and his mana, becomes the force that will bring pain and despair to the enemy before him. And then he projects a circle to delimit the area of effect, leaving the bear in the center, and well, he gives credit for that victory to the fairy queen, and says that through a contract, he wishes for a miracle to happen before him, and asks the fairy to annihilate her enemy with her true power. And so, Earth uses the magic, Prism Nova, and his HP drops completely, but his enemy is hit by a shiny ball that turns him into stone, and after that, Earth tried to use the magic several more times, to understand the its effects. And at the end of his experiments, Earth comments that Prism Nova could be a spell that affects all enemies in the area with several random effects, and the fairy says that he is right, and explains that many statuses can have an effect, but paralysis and petrification are the least likely, and in addition, the fairy warns him that the interval between using magic is long, so he should use it intelligently. And well, she tries to take one of the snacks from the table, but Earth hits her again, and tells the fairy not to eat the food he is going to sell, but she complains, and says that the food in the fairy kingdom is all sweet, so she wanted to eat other things too. And besides, to try to make him to have compassion, she explains that because she is the highest ruler of the kingdom, she is practically a slave to the state, that is, she already has a busy life, and Earth comments that she is very stressed. And well, that annoying guy from the city appears there and says he's angry that Earth ignored him, and he immediately remembers the man, and asks if he wanted to talk to him, and the man introduces himself as Nazar, a member of the Apollo's Ark Guild, and he explains that his group is working towards a great goal, which in this case would be saving oppressed archers everywhere. But upon hearing this Earth doesn't understand what the guy really wants, and Nazar explains that because Earth is also an archer, he couldn't help but talk to him. After all, in his mind, Earth must cry in the bath because he doesn't belong to any guild, and he says he was there to show all his solidarity, and says that his team prepared for him the lowest ranking position in his guild, therefore Nazar ends by telling Earth to join his guild. But he says he doesn't want to, and leaves him talking alone, and well, after a long day of work, Earth asks if it wasn't time for the fairy queen to leave, and she replies no, so he finds himself at a loss, and decides to let her take the food she had prepared to sell. And after delivering the food to her, the fairy says that she can do her best, and he calls her a glutton, but she says that's not it, and teleports back to her kingdom, and he doesn't understand what she wanted. Say, but he feels relieved because she certainly won't be coming for a few days, and he plans to fix his equipment the next day. And then Earth goes to Black's house, and he questions why there are so many people there, and Black replies that they just want to be close to him, after all, Earth is a prominent player now. And well, he asks everyone to move away from the table, and then his first step is to improve his compound hunting bow by new and better quality, and will also use light metal instead of iron. And with the result of his work, Earth managed to give a big upgrade to his powerful bow, and now he will improve his bladed shoe, and for this he will also make big changes, including the material of the equipment. Before he had used iron, but this time he decided to use light metal too, as this will increase his defense and give him more mobility when landing, and in addition, Earth comments that he will make the spikes of the boot with steel, and will put the twist which he learned by making arrowheads, to increase the power of his attacks. And finally, he goes to the blade, and remembers that last time he had placed it on the side of the sneaker, but this time he will adapt it so that it is on the front of the sneaker, and will also make it have joints and can move, as this makes it easier to change the blades when needed. Furthermore, the boot is much more lethal, because if he kicks with the tips of his feet, the blades will cause damage, and if he kicks with the sole, the spikes will cause damage, and this will certainly make things much easier. In combat, and in the end, all his equipment turned out as planned, and all the men applaud him, but Earth feels that it would have been better if they hadn't liked his intentions, like last time, and well, 
he goes to Myun to get the his bearskin cape. And the merchant demands the 5000 glow they had agreed for the merchandise, but Earth asks if it's okay for her to do it that way, after all the cover turned out to be much more badass than they expected, but Myun says that she always charges the initially promised amount, regardless of the result of the equipment. And then he receives a message from a person called Iam, the master of the Apollo Art Guild, and upon returning home he comes across several members of that guild, and Iam introduces herself to him, and Earth asks what they wanted to talk about. Now, and she says she went there to apologize to him, because Iam found out about the trouble Nazar caused him, and she explains that after his battle against the Fairy Queen, there isn't a player who doesn't know him, and for her guild being archers, Iam says they could grow even more if he joined. And she says that Nazar possibly had this in mind when she called him to the guild. And then Earth says that she shouldn't worry about it as he isn't bothered. But Iam says that he didn't just do that, and she says that Nazar has been using Earth's name without authorization to recruit more archers, and for that she would like to apologize on his behalf. But Earth continues to be kind, and says that he forgives her for what Nazar did, and she says that she has already imposed a penalty on him, so that he will never do that again, in this case he was demoted from lieutenant to ordinary member, and in addition, he also lost his privilege of inviting people to the guild. And Iam explains that this is his responsibility as a leader, and Earth says that this is a great way to lead, so he would have no objections to that, and well, Iam changes the subject, and says that his battle against the fairy queen it was incredible, and she also says that he is the hope for all archers, and that's why she asks him to continue being that way. And then Earth realizes that that match had more effects than he imagined, and well, some men comment about him, and say that Earth, in addition to defeating an EA and gaining his friendship, is influencing countless players out there, and this makes men need to pay more attention to this player. As they are attacked, registration is open for the new round of players, and with that, the middle-aged player notices that the developers are allowing the same number of new players as the number of existing players. And then the old man deduces that the new servers have certainly already been installed, in addition, he also comments that the lack of VR headset has also already been resolved, and this means that the records will not be open for long. And well, Zvi calls Earth, and tells him that the developers added a new status effect in the patch, and he asks Earth how he will deal with it. In this, Earth understands that break arms are a problem if you are hit by them, as the effect of these weapons is to make it impossible for you to hold weapons for a while, and Millie warns that they will also need to be careful with paralysis and petrification, as this will also be activated if the player receives more than 25% damage to the arms. In this, Earth pays attention to the good side of this, and says that at least the enemy player will not be able to pick up the weapon that falls from the other player, and Earth talks about an experience he had in another game, where a player steals his rare weapon after have killed him. And well, another announcement from the developers appears in the sky, and they announce the new update, and they say that a new dungeon is coming, and its name will be, A Challenge of the Departed. And it is a completely randomly generated dungeon, so each time players enter it, they will have a different experience, and the developer explains that this dungeon will have all types of traps possible, to deceive the most unlucky players. In this, she warns everyone to think quickly while they are there, so that they don't die like the other players, and then she raises a question with a challenging tone, in this case, she wants to know how far each player can get before the time limit runs out. Runs out. And she says that everyone's first objective will be to reach the 10th floor. And then the developer asks everyone to wait for their next update. So Zvi is a little apprehensive about imagining this dungeon. But Earth feels excited. And says that this it looks like a lot of fun. And then the developer makes an advanced showing of their trailer. To start the second round of player registrations. In this they show some of the players from the first round including Zvi and Earth, but the boy complains about being seen by everyone, but Millie says he shouldn't be ashamed of anything, as he did very well in that fight. And Earth says that if new players think the bows are that strong, they will regret playing, and well, he goes back to the dungeon issue, and notes that he will need a shield, besides, Earth he feels that he won't be able to advance much further in the game if his only defense is to dodge, after all the dungeon is very tight and this will make it difficult for Earth to move. And then he specializes his shield skill into small shields, 
as this makes it easier for him to use his bow. And thanks to these improvements, Earth is able to collect materials at the same time. And well, after training he goes to his blacksmith friend, to make new equipment, and his friend asks what he intends to do now, to which Earth responds that he will make a new compound bow, using some designs brought from the real world. And when making the bow, the blacksmith is surprised with the fact that its attack is high. After all the weapon only has three points, but Earth says that this bow also has a defect, in this case, it would be the price of the arrows, which are very expensive. Furthermore, he explains that he only created this bow to learn more about how this type of weaponry works, so he won't use it, so the blacksmith understands that the boy's goal is to make something even better, and Earth says that this is really his goal, but he explains that this is the best bow that exists in the real world, meaning he will have to design a better bow on his own. And after working all night on this project, Earth finally finishes his light metal shield, and he explains that he used material from the exoskeletons of powerful ants on the sides of the shield, to reinforce it. Then he notices that the shield has an accuracy bonus, and Earth deduces that this came from the small telescopic sight he placed on the shield, in addition, if he lets go of the equipment's handle, it will return to being a normal shield. And well, Earth explains that he just racked his brains over all these equipment projects, precisely because he knew that they would result in something very useful and effective, and Earth understands that the functioning of his shield is very strange, but because it is a weapon made by he, Earth reveals. In this he tests his shield's attack, and feels safer about break arms, because even if he is hit by it, he can still attack from a long distance with his shield, and so he feels that the entire five days of working in their project, they compensated. And well, the old man installs the new dungeon update, and Earth already notices all the players excited about the news, so he decides to go to the dungeon, and many players take the opportunity to set up potion shops around the dungeon, and with that Earth he realizes that he is not the only one who is happy, after all, many commercial players will make money from all this. And well, Earth is poked by a guy dressed as a Power Ranger, and he doesn't understand anything, but the man introduces himself as Red, and his friends do the same, and when they were about to present the name of their group, Earth interrupts them, and notes that this is a group of players who are taking inspiration from the Sentai Rangers. However, he asks where the Black Ranger was, and Red says that he had a stomach ache, so he couldn't go, so they lose credibility with Earth, and he decides to just ignore them, but the Red Ranger comments to him that his group does not have enough people, meaning they are looking for one more member. And seeing that he wouldn't have a chance to go very far alone, Earth believes that the best thing is to ally with them, and so he asks if they want him in the group, and the Red Ranger accepts, and calls them to go and attack the Earth's enemies. Dungeon. And arriving there, the Red Ranger gives the command to advance, but Earth detects that there are many traps in the area, and asks them to wait a little, as they are on an unpleasant map, and he adds 15 traps in total, with four of them leads to instant death. At this Earth comments that it is normal for heroes to fall into traps, but he doesn't want to be eliminated so soon, and so he decides that he will go ahead, and asks everyone to step only where he steps. And on the way, the Blue Ranger comments that the Red One was right to have accepted Earth into the group, although he initially distrusted the boy. But Earth understands that this distrust is natural, as you never know what might happen when adding a new member to an event, which is why he is surprised to have been accepted into a group so quickly. Then the Red Ranger says that they had the privilege of meeting the guy who married the Fairy Queen, and because of that there was no way Earth could be weak, and well, after overcoming all the traps, he sighs with relief, and the Red Ranger says that they will lead the mission from now on. And then they encounter the first enemy skeletons, and all five rangers go on the attack, and commit to destroying all the enemies in the room, and upon seeing them in action, Earth understands why they are called heroes, and so he says he will just focus on locating the traps. And well, they reach the stairs that lead to the second walk, and they say that it took them a long time to overcome the traps in the room, and Earth apologizes and says that he will disarm the traps faster from now on, but he warns that it is dangerous to rush with these things. And the Green Ranger tells him to stay calm, as they are not stupid enough to complain about something like that, and the Pink Ranger adds that she is happy to have him in the group, while the Yellow Ranger says that they need to be careful as they advance. And well, 
They go down the stairs to the second floor and the Red Ranger says that because it took them 18 minutes to get past the first floor they should get past that floor even faster. But Earth says that sometimes an automatically generated dungeon may or may not be in their favor and when the Red Ranger advances, he soon comes across whites and skeleton soldiers, but the Pink Ranger says she will take care of them all. Then she casts a spell on the enemies, but the skeletons still survive as they are able to dispel the spell and the green ranger says that they are different skeletons than the ones on the first floor and well more whites appear to attack them but the red ranger draws his sword and asks everyone to calm down after all they can still destroy all these enemies but when the yellow ranger attacks he realizes that his attacks cannot are causing damage to the whites then earth kills the white with his bow and explains that these creatures cannot suffer physical damage, and then he asks the Yellow Ranger to leave it to him and the other rangers. And Earth attacks the beast with his wind dust arrow, as it has wind magic, and with it he is able to kill the last white, and with that they are finally about to reach the fourth floor, and Earth says that they they've already been in the dungeon for 40 minutes, so there's no way they can get to the tenth floor in time, and so Earth says it's best for them to go straight to the fifth floor. And well, he notices a strange sensation hovering in the air, as if a grim reaper was caressing his face, and with that Earth deduces that something is not right on that floor, and they hear another group screaming in the next room. And then the Red Roger takes the lead and breaks down the door, and the other rangers follow him, so as not to be left behind, Earth follows them. But he notices that they were trapped there, by a trap that will only release them if they complete the mission in that room. Then the rangers come across several enemies, and Earth scans the place, and then he discovers that there are no traps there, so he can fight with all his strength, and in the meantime, the rangers heal and help the other players, and this way they gain more friends to help fight the monsters. And then the blue and pink ranger combine their magic and attack towards the enemies, and thus they clear that area, and one of the players thanks the red ranger for the help but he says he only did what anyone would do, in that they they find a huge treasure chest. And one of the players goes there to get what's inside, but Earth detects that there are threats inside that chest, and tells the player to move away, but the player understands that Earth wants the treasure all for himself, and Earth explains that in fact that is a trap. But the boy thinks he's very smart, and says he has the ability to steal, so he would know if it really posed any risk, and so Earth asks the boy to wait for them to leave the room, and only then touch the chest. But upon hearing this, the Green Ranger refuses, as they should also get part of the reward. So the Blue Ranger tells him to do what Earth is saying, and then everyone leaves the room, and he explains that there was a trap in that room. Double, the first of which traps them inside with a bunch of monsters, and then kills them with his own greed. And well, they run out of time and are teleported out of the dungeon. And then one of the rangers tells Earth that one of the players was not able to detect the threat from the chest, even though he had stealing skills, and then he asks what Earth's level would be, after all he was able to identify the trap. And well, he says he is not able to say the exact number, but it is more than 20, but in his mind Earth imagines that he must have already passed level 30, because if he had been at level 20 he would not have been able to see the trap, but still he doesn't think that should be said to a person he just met. Well, the Red Ranger suggests that they split the winnings, so they can call it a day, and Earth says that his stealing skills have increased a lot, and that makes him happy, so he's already satisfied with that, but the Green Ranger says that he is not satisfied, as he wishes he had explored the second floor more, because he believes that there must be good items there, and so he explains that the best way to get through the entire dungeon is to clear an entire floor before moving on to the next floor, as he likes to complete the map. In this, Earth understands his feeling, and says that the feeling of completing a map is gratifying, and well, the ranger shows his completed map of the first floor, but the red ranger doesn't understand anything about what is there on that paper and the ranger Rosa says he doesn't have the slightest sense of direction, besides, the maps are randomly generated, meaning this map of his won't be of any use. And well, the red ranger thanks Earth again for exploring the dungeon with them that day, and then he asks to send him a friend request. And after that, Earth understands that if he wants to get to the 10th floor in less than an hour, he must disarm the traps more quickly, and that's why he decided to build a tool that helps with his theft skills, 
and with that the blacksmith goes to him and asks if he will order another strange item. And Earth says that he will do something to disarm the traps in the new dungeon, and he explains that he could do it faster with a gathering tool, but it is difficult to get one that is thin and unbreakable. And then he takes Earth's tool and makes some adjustments, and he returns home all excited because with this new tool everything will be much easier, and well, the fairy queen appears out of nowhere to bother him, and he notices that she is in full costume today, and asks if something wrong happened. And the fairy explains that she will distribute contract crystals to the new adventurers, so that they can make contracts with fairies, and her objective is to deliver as many as she can that day, in addition she explains that there are many emails for her to respond. And Earth wonders if she was talking about the game's GMs, but even so, he understands that delivering the crystals personally must be very old-fashioned, so she hurries, but first tries to kiss him, but Earth says that they are not married, but then he worries because he thinks he hit her too hard. And then she says goodbye, and Earth notices that he also needs to work hard, just like her, and after collecting some items, he decides to go cook, but the fairy queen returns, and Earth notices that she doesn't seem to be doing well at all, but she says that the delivery of the crystals occurred as expected. However, what upset her were the player's indecent questions about her personal life, and well, with all this stress, the fairy decided that she would have no choice but to summon everyone who asked these questions for a fight, and then then she would revive and kill them at least ten times. Then Earth is afraid of the queen's idea, but she says she didn't do it because the players said it would be a reward for them to be punished like that, and after the players smiled at her idea, the fairy understood that she shouldn't mess around with humans as they are very scary. And then she says she's very tired, and asks to rest on his lap while Earth caresses her, in addition, she asks him to sign a marriage form, and upon seeing this Earth asks where she learned that kind of thing. And the fairy explains that she got that paper from the city hall and already signed it, so all he had to do was sign it, so they could officially be a couple, but he refuses again, and the fairy calls him stubborn, and explains that the dynamics of a couple is the husband coming home tired after work, and having a wife to cheer him up, but Earth is reluctant anyway. And well, after that he serves her a meat loaf and explains that his cooking skill finally reached level 50 and so he could use a steamer, and so he thought it would be a good idea to try making this bread, the fairy understands that she is his first customer to try that delicacy, and then she lies down on his lap, and Earth is willing to please her a little that day, after all she has a very difficult, and at the beginning of the episode you suddenly gets hit by an enemy and becomes immobile then the scene cuts to a few days before I explain that by making a set of tools for his personal use he spent his days going into the dungeon alone with the aim of improving his skills in breaking and disarming traps and in the beginning he always failed, blowing up the traps, even dying in many cases, but as he practiced, he finally reached level 50 of his theft skill, so now he is able to Evolved to a higher ranking skill in this he analyzes the superior theft skill and notes that it is just a more powerful version of the theft skill but in general it does basically the same things as the benevolent theft skill allows you to steal the monsters and also get bonuses when attacking stealthily and this would make him stand out as a thief but earth notes that he will need to have more experience. To evolve in this he decides to stay with the benevolent skill and well he receives a Message from the rangers and everyone. 059. They go outside to confiscate a new trap then you finally meet the black ranger and he starts to disarm the trap but they both show a lot of excitement doing this and the pink ranger questions why all that euphoria and the red ranger he comments that he only introduced the two because he thought they would get along but he didn't imagine that they would be such friends and well after that day earth reports that he started to enter the dungeon alone and as he disarmed more and more traps. And she passed to fail less and with that he. He began to have access to much more treasure without the chests exploding in his face, in addition his benevolent theft skill was also increasing. Use his distance vision ability that allows him to see in the dark and by doing this earth managed to reduce the number of battles he had to face and upon realizing this he started to avoid several unnecessary fights so. 
able to go deeper into the dungeon and then he had finally arrived at the staircase that leads to the penultimate order and when looking at his available time F notices that he still has 5 minutes to complete the dungeon and he explains that this time is very little because the light on the ninth floor, he just follows the path to see how far he can get and when going down the stairs he comes across the first monster on the floor. But the creature passes right by him, but his friends still warn him that the liches continue to be dangerous because in addition to using their status attacks they also summon nearby monsters and this would be a problem for H after all he is alone in the dungeon and he understands that there is no way to fight against the milk so his strategy is to continue the path forward without attracting attention of the monsters but when I arrive in a room he finds several trap warnings and the ladder is in the center of that room but earth says that it won't give him time to disarm all the traps so the only thing left for him is to just move on. 250, he activates his fly ability and starts to float over the room heading towards the stairs so he ends up stepping on a trap but as he was already there earth gets up and continues moving forward and with that he finally reaches the stairs and when looking at his available time he realizes that the timer has stopped with 2 milliseconds left before he is expelled from the dungeon. He takes his potion and does not understand what is happening there. After all he is still on the stairs and this all indicates that he apparently reached the top floor. Then Earth starts to think himself because he arrived at the place of the dirtiest that no other player managed to get there and well he starts to go down the stairs to the top floor accompanied by a lamp at a certain moment Earth notices someone saying something he asks if there is anyone there the voice responds that he didn't expect anyone to reach that floor without anyone's help and that being introduces himself as Andre. A knight of the empire and he explains that that staircase is very long so Andre suggests that H listen to some of his story as he goes down the stairs he says that his nation ordered him to investigate that place, in this case the labyrinth of the dead, they asked Andre to find the place and a large army of men came with him. But the monsters and the traps on the floors killed him all of them and thus only Andre survived the maze of death he reports that he went through the entire maze alone until he reached the deepest room but when he got there Andre only saw an empty place and there was not even air for him to breathe so he he ended up dying and was transformed into a skeleton knight shortly afterwards and with that he was forced to protect the dungeon at all costs. He tells Andre that he went there to seal the labyrinth. But he ended up being transformed into a guardian of the place and well he he wonders if the room is still in the same place as always and Andre says no because he destroyed it and he says that he is the only one who wouldn't die in a trap like that and upon hearing this H notes that even in his death Andre tried to honor his role as knight and he. He tells FF that they will meet at the end of that staircase, he asks what Andre wants him to do. He responds that he wants to be killed soon because he has endured that situation for a long time and Andre explains that he is tired of resisting so that his heart doesn't give out. A monster, but he says that he won't be able to sustain it for long, after all, he's already tired of all that and he begs FF to free him so that he can be alongside his companions who died in that labyrinth. Stairs disappear I fell into a deep abyss and when I look up UFF notices a person approaching and asks if he would be Andre and the being starts to laugh and celebrates saying that Andre finally gave up that body to him because now that creature was in possession total body of the night then he gets up and attacks the monster and says that that voice was already irritating him. So the being gets angry and that he is going to give a painful death to that daring human, but H dodges his first blow but notices that that creature is very fast at this, the skeleton tries to hit him again and this time hits his shield but Zerf says that the battle is not over yet and the monster explains that the boy's strategy is to focus on his defense to try to avoid being hit as much as possible and then he goes on the attack again, Masurf disperses him with flames. Then he prepares his bow and makes it clear that his strategy is not just about protecting himself and because he is not a swordsman. He explains that he fights with his bow and arrow from a distance, but the creature 
manages to destroy the boy's weapons with break arms and he goes up again. I manage to get away with it but the creature becomes even more confident after all he can no longer use the bow and the monster says that now he's finished and tells him to give up once but URF says it's not time to give up yet as he still has his tricks up his sleeve so he uses his shield to attack and during the fight he starts to worry because his other secret bow isn't as useful as he can only shoot special arrows. Plus you can't. Use special skills along with this bow, however. He remembers that the bow shoots quickly, he can also aim faster with it than if he had a large bow, so he decides that the best thing to do is to fight with quantity and not force and well, the creature gets stressed about the fact that URF doesn't stop moving and attacks him with a shield charge. He then opens his status and discovers that that blow leaves him unable to move, so the monster says that he didn't expect to have to use this ability with bro and he claims that he already. He wasted too much time in that fight so he says he will take care of sending EF to the god he loves so much. The boy questions what he means by that and the monster explains that whenever something happens, humans usually pray to god because they love him he attacks RF again and again, but he dodges and hits the monster with his pointy sneaker and he explains that there are no gods in that electronic world. After all, the only things that can be found there are human wills, which in this case fight to survive same. That everything is unfavorable on his side and the monster comes back and rules his sword and asks UFF to show this will in practice so he goes on the attack but creates an illusion by getting close to his enemy so that he can then hit him with a diagonal kick and after that he calls for all the fairies in the place to hear his voice, he asks them all to grant his wish. He explains to the creature that all his prayers are directed to the fairies and he begins to make his request for ruler of the fairies in an exchange of a part of your magic he asks the ruler before the fairies to grant him her great protection he also asks for his magic and his favor to become a force that brings pain and despair to the enemy before him in this the monster asks him to stop casting that magic but you keeps going forward until the monster manages to move briefly and breaks h's shield but he continues casting the spell and finally he summons the elder Prisma Nova and attacks the enemy, realizing that this time he managed to cast the spell by. Complete. Therefore this was the most powerful Nova Prism he has ever made and he asks to receive petrification or paralysis so that he can find a way out of that situation and while well the dust settles and the monster is still alive and states that he will pay for having it injured however, an illusion of the fairy queen appears and the monster immediately notices who it is. With countless magic arches and then throws countless explosive potions against the monster and with that he finally kills the monster that had dominated Andre's body and finally the knight himself appears and says that Huff fought bravely. Furthermore Andre explains that he defeated the enemy before his soul disappeared, therefore you gave him some time to thank him for his help, so he either asks if he did what Andre wanted and he responds that H gave him even more than he expected. After all, for Andre he would spend his last moments of life being a monster, but thanks to 924, help him, this won't happen and South surprises him with counterattack calmly, Andre is calm but he explains that before they fought he was in a state of complete despair. After all, Andre didn't expect that Earth would be able to beat that monster alone and well Andre notices that it's time to leave but before that he presents Earth with his sword as a reward and although it's bad for combat Andre says that if he sells it UFF he can get some money from it, he accepts the gift and Andre talked to the boy about what he said. That there is no god in that world and he says that for him there is a god there because now he can meet his son as a human and not as a monster. Furthermore, he is also alongside his companions and for Andre, only God could give him all this luck so he says he will pray for God to bless HF's path too and so he leaves and HF thanks him for those words and after that a door opens. Then the creators of the game announced that one of the secret bosses of a challenge of those who left was defeated and with that a new type of weapon was unlocked which in this case was the knight's sword and the developers explain that this sword is a superior version of a one-handed sword as it has a long range and a very powerful attack. 
That the announcer had said that one of the secret bosses had been defeated and with that off he suggests that there must be more bosses to defeat and consequently there must be more weapons to be unlocked and the next day he goes to his friend blacksmith's house to repair his equipment but he can't fix any and well he decides to transform his broken weapons into a new shield but things still weren't going well because his bow and leather equipment also needed repairs and this will certainly cost him a lot of money. Your pocket and with that suggests that the best thing to do is to take a break from solitary fights, at least for now. In another corner of the game, a girl comments that it's finally her turn to appear and she shows a lot of excitement. A girl reports that the PN0 EA player appears be having fun, and the boy next door comments that her learning seems to be advancing thanks to the archer, so he feels they should thank him. However, the girl says that PN 1 EB has been complaining that she is bored, and so he suggests that they allow her to go for a walk, and well, Earth meets up with her friends, and Zvi thanks him for coming, and explains that Nora and Kazamine won't be able to play today, and that's why he was thinking about having some rogue that could deal damage. Then Earth says that if they organize the group this way, there will only be Millie left as a healer, and he wonders if that would work, and then she explains that they will have a new healer, but Zvi says that she is already late. And Rage comments that this girl has a strong temper, to which Earth gives a yellow smile and says she will try not to care too much about it, and then Zvi apologizes, as this is the only person left. And Earth says that there are few tanks and healers, so there's nothing for them to do, and speaking of the girl, she finally appears, and is enough to have fun with everyone, calling them her receptionists. Then Zvi loses his temper with her, but tries to control himself and tells Earth that the girl is called Elizabeth, but they call her Eliza to avoid fatigue. And then he says that Eliza is a very skilled magician, so they could rest assured about her competence. But Zvi still disapproves of her disrespectful appearance, and asks the girl to apologize to Earth. And upon hearing this, Eliza points at him with disdain, and questions whether a weak archer like him will really be useful, and Zvi goes back to biting himself in anger, but Earth smiles gently and explains that he will prove whether he is useful or not as soon as they arrive at the dungeon. Well, they go there, and Earth disarms several traps, and he explains that many floors have numerous traps, and some of them kill in one hit, so they should be careful. And then Eliza looks at him with contempt and says that he's at least useful for disarming traps, so they go up to the fifth floor of the dungeon, and Zvi suggests that they stop to rest there, but Eliza says that they don't have time for that, after all, they have a deadline to finish the dungeon. And Rage says that they should proceed carefully from that floor, as sometimes a dangerous enemy appears on the fifth floor, in this case it is the inferior liches, and then Eliza asks if they are really that strong. And Earth says that no physical attack works against them, in addition, they are also able to use various status effects to stop their enemies' movements, and he calls those monsters, trauma generators. However, Millie says that she is able to undo freezing or paralysis effects, Eliza, she is able to cure petrification, and as for the green-haired girl, she says that she learned magic-type attacks, and with that she can hurt any lich bottom. And with that, Zvi confirms that they are already prepared to deal with these enemies, and Earth says that now they just have to follow carefully, and well, he notices that there are monsters nearby, and counts twelve, four of which are inferior liches. Everyone is apprehensive, and Zvi asks if there are any traps in that room, and Earth says no, and then Zvi advises everyone to fight there. And all the players get excited for the fight, so Zvi asks Eliza to prepare some attack spells, but she was immobile with fear, and then he reinforces what he said again and asks the girl to attack the enemy with something strong. And meanwhile, the enemies start to appear, and Earth attacks them with the wide arrow technique, then Millie also attacks with fire magic, but the monsters resist and fly towards them again, in this rage stands in front of the players and uses his shield to protect them. Then, the green-haired girl and Zvi defeat the monsters, and he comments that things would be easier if he had a magic sword, and meanwhile, the monsters petrify rage, leaving him unable to move. And then Mill asks Eliza to cure him, and Zvi explains that if she doesn't cure rage's petrification, they will all end up dead, so she decides to act, but soon after she feels scared again about it all. And Zvi says he's already running out of HP, so Eliza should hurry up soon, 
and well, Earth throws three potions into the meters, to dispel them, and then he asks Eliza to help the others, as the monsters are already gone, and so she does. Then Zvi notices that now the enemies will be weaker, and after they finish off all the monsters, Eliza questions why Earth hadn't used those potions before, and he says that it's risky to use them, besides, he can't carry a lot of these potions. However, the girl criticizes him again, and Zvi tells her to stop it, and then Millie asks the two to stop fighting, as now they are not just with the guild members, and upon seeing her like that, Earth notices that Millie is pretty scary when she's mad. And well, Eliza realizes she was wrong and apologizes to Earth, but he pays attention to the fact that they are still in the dungeon, and the boy says he is counting on her cures, and after finishing the game in the dungeon, Zvi thanks Earth, after all, he helped them a lot that day. But he says that he also achieved good things by exploring the dungeon with them, and for that he feels equally grateful, so the group says goodbye to him, and the next day, Earth notices that two new weapons have appeared in the game, in this case they are the Japanese Ark and the Ootachi, in this he remembers that Kazumine had a samurai-like appearance, and then Earth deduces that he will probably like the Ootachi. And well, a girl suddenly stops him, and Earth notices that she has pointy ears, Japanese clothing and dragon horns, that is, that is not a player avatar, and then he asks who she is, and the girl says she is the younger sister of the fairy queen. And upon hearing this, he immediately feels that he is in trouble, and the girl says that she is sad to see him so uncomfortable, and Earth asks why she came to see him, and she replies that there are many reasons for that, however the main one is being able to try his lips. And then he hits her with his fan, and she realizes right away that she really can only be the sister of the fairy queen, and after this interaction between the two, the girl understands why her sister liked him so much. And she comments that she heard about him making wonderful food, and says she wants to try it, but he apologizes to her, and says he has an appointment at the armor store. And the fairy says that he could go to that place first, but she wants to go too, and she explains that she doesn't have many opportunities to go out like she did today, and that's why she wants to take advantage and walk around the city. He feels sorry for this and decides to take her, and when she arrives at the store, the girl says she is surprised by those products, as she didn't imagine that human hands were capable of doing all that, and then Myun thanks her for the compliment, and comments with Earth that he brought a really cute girl today. And upon hearing this, he becomes embarrassed and explains that he is there to reform his cloak, but she says that that piece of clothing has already reached the end of its life, so the fairy does not understand this expression, and Myun explains that reaching the end of end of life means that the item is damaged, therefore the best option would be to buy another one. And then Earth remembers that he has been through a lot with this cloak and ended up wearing it too much in his battles, so he asks Myun to make him new armor, but Earth brought the specific materials for that. And the girl asks if there would also be some metallic material, and he says there is silver, so Myun prepares a set of leather armor reinforced with silver, and says that the price for this equipment will be 12,000 glow. And then he closes a deal with her, and the fairy starts to rush him, because she wants to eat his food as soon as possible, so he makes her a dish, and when eating the steak, the girl is amazed at his skill, of earth in the kitchen. And after finishing eating, the girl orders two more steaks, and then it becomes clear to earth that this girl is really the fairy queen's sister, and speaking of which, he questions whether she would also be a fairy, and the girl says that cannot give many details about her, not even her real name. So he decides that he will call her Ryu, because she has those Japanese dragon horns, and she comments that she didn't imagine getting a nickname from a human, but she allows him to call her that, especially because she intends to go visit him, it from time to time. And well, another announcement appears in the sky, and Earth goes into his blacksmith mood, whereupon Black comments on that new announcement, and Earth explains that it was an announcement about a previously hidden aspect of the game's design, and he explains that skills evolve as they move up and learn new techniques, however there was a condition that needed to be met to learn stronger techniques, in this case, the player would need to specialize in a specific style of play. So if a person wanted to use stronger physical techniques, they would need to learn only physical attack skills, but if a person wanted to learn more powerful magic techniques, they would need to learn only magic skills. And Earth comments that this would even be efficient for combat skills, but other people would not benefit from it, such as Black himself, 
as he is an artisan player. And then he asks what Earth will do now, after all, they only received a month to review their abilities, and Black feels that Earth will have problems in his future battles if he doesn't change his ability so he analyzes that by specializing in physical attacks, he will have more firepower, but the your current specialty is the one that makes you happiest, so Earth says it won't change. And Black says that some part-time artisans are disappearing more and more, so if he still has Earth to keep him company he will feel less alone and he feels that being able to make people happy with delicious food is a way to demonstrate strength, and he doesn't want to replace that with anything. Well, the next day he goes to get his armor, and Myun comments that the equipment was good because of the materials he brought, and Earth says that the armor was great, because his defense went up a lot. And then she asks what he intends to do with the previous armor, and he replies that he will find a way to fix it, and Myun says that she will be happy if he makes good use of his new armor. And Earth comments that in that game it is possible to directly touch his equipment, and perhaps this explains why he is so attached to them, because for him, saying goodbye to an item is like saying goodbye to someone. Zvi talks to the group about the campaign that was announced about the game, and Earth explains that there are currently four games that use VR, namely one more, another FPS, and a mecha. And all these games used a different VR helmet until then, but to increase their customers, companies decided to make the games compatible with any helmet. In this, Zvi informs that the companies have started a major campaign that will give a 15-day free trial and the addition of One's Fairy Kingdom begins on the same day as this campaign, and with that the four games will have even more players. And then he ends up getting emotional and tries to take a bite of Earth's steaks, but he quickly restrains him, and says that that food is for the customers, and to avoid more problems Earth gives his fan to Nora, leaving her responsible for punishing him, him, in case Zvi tries anything again. And then Kazamine comments that with the increase in the number of players, guilds should probably be preparing to recruit new members, and Nora says that they should increase the number of their guild more as well, as she believes that they can already become a guild medium-sized. However, she thinks that Eliza should still be brought into line, otherwise she will be a problem for the newcomers, and speaking of which, Zvi takes the opportunity to call Earth to their guild, but he refuses, and says he prefers to be alone, so he has the freedom to do whatever he wants. Furthermore, Earth feels that she will have problems if the players discover his relationship with the queen and her sister, and when talking about her, Ryu appears, and tries to put her hand in the food he is making, and Earth hits her with his fan and says again that he is making that food for customers. And then she says that looking at that meat and restraining herself is almost impossible, but he explains that if he lets her eat just one steak, she will want to eat more and more, until there is nothing left, and the two begin to argue, and Millie he asks who that girl is who appears out of nowhere. And upon seeing her better, Rage notices that this is another fairy, and then he wonders if Earth wasn't satisfied with just one, so he sets his fan to fan, and explains that Ryo causes him a lot of harm by eating his goods. And when analyzing their posture, the girls realize that they are very close, in addition, Earth calls her by a nickname, and then she explains that only he can call her that, and in the meantime, Zvi says that she will publish about the fairies in the forum, but Earth threatens him not to let him eat his food anymore. And well, Nora comments that in addition to being a fairy groomer, Earth is also a dragon sitter, and then he turns his gaze to Ryu, and wonders what would happen if he decided to go to the Fairy Kingdom. In this it is explained to us that the Fairy Kingdom is southeast of the game's second city, more precisely in Nexia, and the castle is in the center, the other cities are spread out in crews, and in addition, there are also forts that serve as a checkpoint in each of the different directions on the map. And that kingdom had finally just arrived in the game, and with that many players are going to the place to check out the news, including Earth, and in front of him he sees the northern fort, whereupon an unknown man comes up to him and comments about him having the queen's ring, and with this he recognizes Earth, and says he is responsible for the northern fort. Furthermore, the guardian of the place also informs him that the queen ordered them to take him to her immediately, so he asks the other man to bring the Pakasha, and this creature would be a bird that few people have the privilege of being able to ride. In it, including the fairies themselves. And then he asks Earth to use that bird to go to the castle town, and then he rides Pikasha, and in the air Earth notices that the bird creates a barrier that blocks the wind, making the experience of flying with him be even better. And well, 
They finally arrive at the city, and when the castle doors open, the fairy queen was already there waiting for his arrival, so Earth kneels down and greets her formally, to avoid embarrassing her. However, she cares little about formality and decides to throw a party where everyone can participate, and the star of the event will be Earth himself and although he doesn't like being the center of attention, he feels that it wouldn't be right to refuse and generate a conflict with the queen. However, when observing everyone happy, Earth notices that the whole display is not as bad as he thought it would be, and he comments that even though he is in a game, few players can have an experience like this, and that is why Earth decides to let go and have fun. And even though he is not there in person, he feels that the memories of what he is experiencing will continue to be marked in his memory, and well, the next day he thanks the queen for the welcome, but he comments that she exaggerated a little. But she explains that her objective with that party was to show the fairies the essence of the kingdom he came from, after all everyone was waiting for him to come, and then she changes the subject and comments about there being some rumors about her monopolizing it. Then a moment of silence occurs, until she goes to him, and confirms that in fact her objective is to keep him all to herself, and upon hearing this, the fairy next door asks the queen to restrain herself and then she comments with earth who would be happy to have you in her kingdom for a while and she states that they won't do anything rude to him like placing guards or lookouts behind him and earth confirms that he will stay in the kingdom for a while and says that from the next day onwards he will walk around like a common adventurer and then earth plans to return to the fort city and explore the place and when he tries to leave the castle, the queen follows him and asks where he is going, to which he responds that he is going to the hotel to sleep. However, she proposes that he sleep with her in her room, and upon hearing this, he gets scared and runs away, and on the way to the hotel he thinks better about what he just did, and feels that jumping out the window makes him look like a thief, but he remembers that he has the benevolent theft skill, which makes him a real thief. And after leaving the castle, Earth got on Pikasha and went to the city of the southern fort, and he explains that he chose that city precisely because it is the furthest from Nexia, and therefore there are fewer players in the place. Earth arrives at an establishment, and says he defeated eight tall rabbits, and a girl asks if he found any ladrave, and he replies yes, because as soon as he shot a tall rabbit, the ladrave honored its name and almost stole his prey right in front of him, but Earth taught the bandit a lesson. And well, he wonders if there is anywhere he can cooking, and she says he can use the kitchen in the back, and he says he will pay to use their structure, and then Earth explains that it is in a place that, in addition to being a tavern, is also the mission center of the city. They turn the second floor into a guest house, and he explains that he will use that place as a base while he does the missions, and after finishing his dish, Earth decides to use Ladrave's meat to make kebabs, in addition he also tried another dish, which consists of mixing high rabbit meat with the remains of the ladrave ground, and then transformed into a cupcake. And upon finishing these other two dishes, Earth is amazed by the flavor of these new recipes that he created himself, but some curious people appear there and comment on the smell being very good. So they put Earth to work, and enjoy his food, and upon seeing all this success, he is impressed, as he didn't think he would cook even in the fairy kingdom, and well, the days passed, and Earth was making each more and more missions, as well as cooking and enjoying with your friends. However, suddenly a girl enters the tavern, desperate, and asks them to hide Earth, as the clueless daughter of the person in charge of the fort is on her way, and then the woman appears, and says that she found out about a human making exotic foods there, and she asks them to bring him to her, because the girl wants to give him a chance to cook like her cook, so the tavern attendant apologizes and says that he is no longer there. But upon hearing this, she is suspicious, and explains that he would never refuse to cook for her, but the attendant states that he continued traveling east, as he had an important matter to resolve, and so she sends her servants to gather information about the adventurers who went east, and she claims that no cook can leave that city without having served her at least once. And after she leaves, everyone complains about her arrogant attitude, and the attendant calls Earth back and apologizes to him, as this is only happening because of her, and she reveals that she already knew his identity, but on orders from the queen, she couldn't tell him she knew him, and well, she goes back to talking about the arrogant girl, and explains that she tends to cause a lot of problems because of her personality, and because her father manages the fort, 
no one can say anything against her. Furthermore, her father never punishes his daughter's selfishness, and upon hearing this, Earth shows concern, after all, nothing good happens when you don't have respect for the people you dominate. And then he decides to leave the tavern, so as not to cause problems for them, and the attendant regrets this, and says that he could stay there forever if it weren't for this small inconvenience. To this he responds that he loved spending those days there, as everyone praised his food, and what's more, he was also able to eat and drink with everyone. And at nightfall, Earth begins to leave, and upon arriving at the fort, the guards comment that they heard about what happened to his spoiled daughter, and he informs them that there are people gathering evidence against this girl, to report her to the queen, and so he advises Earth to go back there when things calm down. And well, as he passes by the fort, he meets one of his friends from the tavern, and he offers to give him a ride to the southern city, as he wants to thank him for the delicious food that Earth made for everyone, and in the meantime, the fairies report to the fairy queen about having received some reports from the people, and they said that the daughter of the man who manages the fort behaved badly towards a human adventurer. And upon hearing this, the queen becomes enraged, as her greatest desire is for fairies and humans to be friends, and such an attitude would only hinder her goal. But in addition, one of the fairies says that the human in question, it was Earth, and that makes her even more nervous. And this was another video on the channel. If you liked it and want more videos like this, subscribe and leave a like, see you in the next one.